Why did we form this country? Well, we told the king that we needed to break away because we believed things that he didn't. And really, at the time, nobody else did. We said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator, with certain inalienable rights. And among those rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And governments are instituted among men to protect those rights. That was a unthinkable thought, unspeakable at the time, because we were all ruled over. We had people who were our superiors, people who were born to rule and rule over us. But we said, we, we hold these things to be self-evident, and that's what we're going to do if we break away. Well, did we do it? Well, in some ways, yes, we tried. We've never really gotten it right from the beginning. We didn't get it right. But that's because people are flawed and times are complex. And changing people to do the right thing sometimes will take generations to do. But after we won the war, we set out a constitution. And that constitution, the first words were shocking again. We, the people of the United States. That had never been written before. The people did not establish a government, but we did. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. What does that mean? That we will never be perfect, but we are trying and striving for a more perfect, just be better than you were yesterday, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and provide for the common defense. May I ask, let me go through these, and may I ask if your government is doing any of these? Are we trying to form a more perfect union? Some would say yes. Yeah, we're trying out some new things. We're, you know, dreaming up some new ways to police. Okay, well, let's just say that's true. Is that a more perfect union? Because we are divided sharply on it. To establish justice, do you feel justice is being served? I think we have destroyed justice. Ensure domestic tranquility. Is our government working towards tranquility or is our government dividing us? To provide for the common defense, are they? Or are they now turning their guns, their investigative bodies, the spy agencies against the American people? Are they providing for the common defense? Are they doing that at the border? To promote the general welfare. I'm not sure what that means other than making sure that they're, they're trying to do uh, the best in growing our country and, and helping us be free so we can generally be happy and taken care of by ourselves. And the most important one is secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Are we doing that? Is our government involved in making sure that we have a country left to give to our kids? Because this, those are the reasons we establish this Constitution. And if this government is not doing those things, then we're failing as citizens who run the country. Right now, you have Joe Biden, who is, who is gaming for absolute power. You can always tell how somebody has absolute power because they can break the law openly and never fear any repercussions. You know, they said that Donald Trump wanted to be a fascist. Boy, he was the worst fascist ever, wasn't he? I mean, the guy couldn't get away with anything. By the way, I would just like to say, for a guy who is investigated by every single spy agency in the world, 
vetted in ways I can't even imagine for them to only come up with what they've come up with. He's got some documents in his house. Really? I mean, even I'm surprised. The guy was building buildings, you know, in New York City. That's not usually a very clean business. Nothing? And yet, the fascistic part of our deep state, they decided he's guilty, and so they will find something. Is he the one that can break the law openly and never fear any repercussions? To be a dictator, you have to have power enough that you can even violate the ancient creeds and the deep-seated taboos. You can have your son doing cocaine and hookers, and you can lie about all of it. You can take money from the Chinese as president of the United States. I mean, I don't think we get any deeper than the, the ancient creeds and deep-seated taboos that just should not be violated. More than that, the president on the take from another country? To be a dictator, you need the ability to commit crime in broad daylight. Now, we have heard abuse of power for a long time. We heard it under George W. Bush. More about it under Trump. But what about Obama or Biden? In his first week alone, Biden signed 21 executive orders. That's far more than Trump, Obama, Bush combined. Now, Friday, he added another one to his list by issuing an order authorizing the Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Homeland Security to call up the military and the Coast Guard Reservists to support NATO operations on the alliance's eastern flank. The order authorizes the Pentagon to send 3,000 reservists for deployment to support Ukraine in Operation Atlantic Resolve. We also found out last week that the president is sending even more weapons. We have found out that now it looks like our fighter jets are already over there. Did you know that? Did you know that when the president gave his speech in Helsinki... He said, there's overwhelming support from the American people. There's overwhelming support from the members of Congress, both the House and the Senate and both parties. Some extreme elements in the Republican Party diverge from this unity. But we're all in. Is that the way you feel? And I, is that the way your neighbors feel? The people who don't necessarily agree with you? Is that what they feel? We're all in? We're also selling, uh, sending cluster bombs. Cluster bombs. Those are, basically, they become landmines, and they can, they can go over a huge, huge area, and they just wait there for somebody to step on it or a kid to play with it, and then they blow up. Are we all in on a war? And if we are, are we prepared for war? And I don't mean just mentally. I mean, are we prepared? There was a story that came out yesterday on The Blaze. It will be a very slow process to refill, refill the strategic petroleum reserve. It could take decades. Now, what is the strategic oil reserve? Well, the strategic oil, why were we fighting in World War II? In the deserts of Africa. Why were we over there? Why were they over there? Simple, oil. You have to have oil for the machinery of war. I'm sorry, I, I haven't seen the new Abrams tank that has the solar panels on it. Or the, the wind turbine on the top of our plane. So when the turbine turns because of the wind, the jets will turn. It doesn't work this way. We have to have oil. 
the SPR is at a 40-year low now. Why did we release 211 million barrels for prices at the gas pump? The reserve has a storage capacity of 714 million. It is currently holding 346 million barrels. This is 40% of it gone. It took six months for the Biden administration to sell 180 million barrels. It will take decades now to refill. By the way, we filled it at approximately $29 a barrel. $29 a barrel. Today, it'll cost us about $75 a barrel. Well, that's good because we have money, right? The U.S. Congressional Budget Office. Now, these are the guys who always get it wrong. So I say that and you'll be like, oh, okay, well, the news can't be bad. No, they always get it wrong because they over, they always uh, underestimate the cost of things. They're always like, gee, I thought that was going to be $5. No, no, it's 500000 for that toilet seat. The national debt, they have come out and said, will be nearly twice as large as the U.S. economy in 30 years. Our debt will be twice as large as our economy. Does that sound good? They just released their forecast. The U.S. Treasury has reported $1.4 trillion deficit so far in the nine months of this fiscal year. If you look at the last 12 months, we've added to our debt $2 trillion. How much are we borrowing a day? We are borrowing... $5.1 $5.1 billion every day. That's $63,000 per second. $63,000 per second. How much do you make in a year? If you look up the average taxpayer, the average taxpayer pays $15,500 per year. It's just under that. That means... For the $5 billion, $5.1 billion, it will take every dime of every dollar you are paying to the, uh, to the treasury every year. It'll take every dollar, every dime for the next 329,032 years to pay for the money that we borrow today. So if you and your family are responsible for just today's debt, you'll have that paid off in 3,655 generations. Don't worry. Now, that's assuming that we're only going to live for 90 years. And let's just say, because of all of the great new technology that we're not going to be able to afford, um, we all live to 150 years. Well, that's great, because now it's only a mere 2,193 generations to pay off Today's borrowing. Now, this doesn't include the estimated $150 trillion needed to stop global warming. Uh, you know, so that may edge that debt up just a, a little bit, maybe by $150 trillion. But don't worry. You leave that worry to our children. You know what I mean? They're going to love us so much just for spending the $5 trillion, uh, sorry, the $5 billion dollars on things today, you know, things that we don't even know what they are. Oh, they're going to love us so much, so much. By the end of 2023, the federal debt held by the public is 98% of GDP. Debt rises in relation to GDP. It surpasses its historic high in 2029 when it reaches 107% of GDP. By 2053, 181% of GDP. Are, Are we really, I mean, I've heard that we're out of airplanes and tanks and shells and all kinds of weapons and we don't have enough soldiers and the soldiers we do have are currently busy, you know, doing gyrating on the stage in dresses. Uh, and, uh, we don't have any strategic reserves. We don't have an awful lot of money 
And I don't see the will to go to World War III. What is it exactly that Biden is planning for us? I will tell you that uh, there's some disturbing things going on, first about war, of course, but also about the trustworthiness of our country. Uh, by the way, you know, before I leave the war front and how we're unprepared, I don't know if you saw this, uh, but uh, the Harvard area middle schools, they've just dropped Algebra 1. Now, why couldn't they have done that when I was in school? I hated Algebra. Hated it. And I remember looking at my, my math teacher. I don't know, must have been in the ninth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. And I said, excuse me. Everything that I will do in my life is all in 60. You know, for instance, five from 60 is 55, and it's five minutes before the beginning of the next hour. That's all I need to know. Why am I studying algebra? And my math teacher said, Mr. Beck, shut up and open your textbook. And I did. So I learned algebra, and I've never used it. But we should learn it. Algebra 1 eliminated from the Harvard area middle schools because too many white and Asian students are taking it. I don't care. I don't care if they're green polka dotted people. I really don't mind. Please, can someone, can someone teach and, and make sure that we learn algebra? I just like to be able to know, hey, I'm driving over a bridge. It's going to be stable. Hey, I'm getting on an airplane. It's not going to fall out of the sky. Somebody needs to know math, and I don't care what color they are.